And today is tax day, and as Americans make sure to mail all of their information to the IRS, they are facing more dire economic news. Not only is the White House having a hard time selling President Obama's deficit reduction plan, but now the credit rating agency Standard and Poor's is now lowering its long-term outlook for America's sovereign debt from stable to negative. Now, the agency has little hope that lawmakers will come together and agree on a plan to reduce the deficit before the 2012 election, and it's not surprising that the White House is already trying to spin this blistering news. The S&P affirmed the AAA bond rating uh, of the United States, but emphasized the importance of timely bipartisan cooperation and action on fiscal reform. Uh, the same emphasis that the president made when he gave his speech last Wednesday. As for its political analysis, we simply believe that the uh, prospects are better. We think that uh, the political process will outperform S&P expectations. Uh, the president uh, is committed, as he made clear in his speech on Wednesday, to uh, moving forward in a bipartisan way to reach common ground on this important issue of fiscal reform. And joining me now with Reaction, nationally syndicated radio talk show host, the author of the number one New York Times bestselling book, The Fair Tax, uh, my good friend Neil Bortz. How are you, buddy? How are you? How are you? How are you? Fine. You're doing well? All right. Th th this is, the fact that they're spinning this is amazing to me, because <laughs> this is what they say. This reduction if, in fact, they did this, a long-term outlook from stable to negative, meaning there is a 33 percent chance that they will downgrade this country's long-term credit rating. And they say the reason is the very large budget deficits and rising government indebtedness for the reason for their decision. And didn't you love him saying that the political will outperform the private uh, expectations in this. Look, what happens if your credit, if, if your credit number, whatever that thing is, credit rating, if it goes down and you go out to buy a car, the interest rate is going to go up. You're going to pay more for the car. A lot more. A lot more. So if if our credit rating goes down as S and P suggest, it might. If we don't get a grip on this soon, we're going to pay a lot more for everything. Interest already eats up a huge part of our annual budget. Can you imagine how much more that will be? It's going to drive us further into indebtedness, in the deficit. The, the news is bad, and we need to get a grip on it right, right now. In two hours and 45 minutes on the East Coast, right. people have to file their taxes. Five hours and 45 minutes on the West Coast. So people are right now, they're hopefully watching the show, they're trying to figure out this incredible tax code. It's amazing that you wrote a book that for weeks and weeks was the number one bestseller that is about taxes. Because on the surface, you even said to me when you wrote it, you think, you think this will go anywhere? And we just, number one on the New York Times, because you would eliminate the IRS, right. we'd get rid of the income tax. Right. Explain it. Well, basically, and just to give you the Reader's Digest version, which you need, it gets rid of all personal and all corporate and business taxes payable to the federal government. Okay? All of them. Right. And payroll taxes included, death tax included. And it replaces them with a consumption tax. It protects every family. Nobody pays any of this until they've taken care of the basic necessities of life for their family. The price of consumer goods do not go up. If you sign up for a job and they say we're going to pay you $2,000 a week. You get $2,000 a week. You get $2,000 a week. If you spend it, you're taxed on it. If you save it, you're not. And the question, it just boils down to this. What should you rather do? Pay 23% of everything you spend or 25 or more percent of everything that you earn. Look, you read the papers every day. This was the front page of USA Today. Feds pounce on tax evaders. Prosecutions up 25 percent from 2001. This would eliminate the IRS. All right. How, so the people say, well, this is great. What would the percentage be? So if you buy a car, you pay what, 20 percent more, 18 percent more? No, you won't pay any more. Because there's an embedded tax in the price of an automobile right now, and it's running about 26, 25, 26 percent in automobiles. Right. It's the total tax burden of everybody involved with bringing that car to the dealer showroom. That disappears under the fair tax. It's gone. It's replaced. How is by this revenue neutral for the government? Because they're going to say, well, we only took in $2 trillion last year, or 2.2. Well, when they researched, they scored it. When they researched the fair tax, they scored it. This is what the revenue. Would be. The, the government's getting now. This is the size of our economy. Here's what the sales tax would have to be to match this revenue. Mm -hmm. But the thing to remember is everything you buy has an embedded tax in it. Those taxes disappear. They're replaced by the fair tax. So you don't pay any more for consumer goods 
uh, under the fair tax than you do right. now. I mean, as we listen to the president, um, the president now has a record. Last right. week, he said that old people, uh, kids with autism, Down syndrome, would be fending for themselves. The week before, we had uh, Louise Slaughter suggesting that Republicans want to kill women. We had other yeah. incendiary remarks from Nancy Pelosi. Uh, the 6, seniors, uh, 6 million seniors won't have meals. Uh, Harry Reid suggesting women won't get mammograms. It seems to be the, the plan they're laying out for 2012. Will well, class warfare work? Uh, I hope not. It has for all of human history. I hope that it'll be. Well, 47% of Americans will not pay any federal income taxes. But today. they'll still pay payroll taxes, a lot of them. But when you engage in hysterical rhetoric like that, it means you don't have a plan. And one thing to remember about Barack Obama, and that is he is on record about we need tax increases whether or not it's going to bring extra revenue to the federal government because... It's about fairness. It's just not right that those people are making that money. Spreading it must be taken. Yeah. It's your patriotic duty, Joe Biden said. Absolutely. Right. I wonder what, how much he's going to pay over and above what he owes on his income tax. Well, he still is the cheapskate when it comes to donating to charity. And I mean, he can't stay awake either. No, he, did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, I loved it. So, so they're going to lay all this fear-mongering out. How, when you have 47% though of Americans that don't pay any federal income tax, when 1% pays 40% of the bill, and then they get clubbed saying you're not generous enough. What does this mean for the country if half the country says, well, I'm not paying. I think the system's fair. Well, and that's exactly the polls they run. 43% of the people say they're paying just about the right amount of income. Paying. Yeah, they're not paying any. Oh. Duh. But it's time for Winning. those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But maybe they'd like better jobs. Maybe they'd like to have a better life for their children than they had. Maybe they'd better start thinking about getting economic growth in the private sector back into this country and not so much about some less left-wingers uh, utopic dreams of wealth seizure and redistribution. We are not owned by the government. We own ourselves. We are not tools for the government uh, to redistribute wealth and make some sort of an egalitarian society. I think you made the best case. It's, it's not a surprise to me that the fair tax became number one for weeks on the New York Times. And on this tax day, Neil Bortz, it's great to see you. Thank you. And I tell it. your people, fairtaxoneword.org. They fair can tax find out everything they want to know. All right, you got it. And coming up, deadly tornadoes ravage uh, the Tar Heel State. We're going to have the very latest details from our own Jonathan Seri. He's on the scene. And this Friday, 9 p.m., tune in for a very special edition of Hannity. Behind the a history of liberal media, and we're going to examine why the mainstream Obama mania media has gone so far left. That's coming up this Friday night, 9 Eastern, right here, Fox News. And devastating news tonight out of the nation's southeast after severe storms and deadly tornadoes savaged the region, killing at least 45 people. Now, the National Weather Service said it received about 250 tornado reports between Thursday and Saturday. Violent twisters touched down in 12 different states, but North Carolina was the hardest hit with 22 dead, at least 130 homes destroyed, and more than 700 damaged. And joining me now with the very latest on all the damage and the relief and recovery efforts that are just beginning is our own Jonathan Sarah. He's standing by in Colray, North Carolina tonight. Jonathan. Good evening, Sean. The recovery has indeed begun. Off in the distance, you can see a few residents returning to what remains of their homes, trying to salvage what they can. And everywhere you look, utility trucks restringing electrical lines that were downed during the tornado. The destruction is amazing and will likely take years to repair, and yet it only took seconds for all this to happen. Take a look at this dramatic home video shot by Andrew Brabble as the tornado moved by his residence. He saw that the twister was headed towards his aunt's house, Jean Burkett, who indeed saw the tornado as well, warned her husband, and after the husband snapped the picture of the tornado, the two sought shelter underneath their stairs. Fortunately, they're okay, and their home only suffered minor damage. But the house across the street was leveled, and uh, Mrs. Burkett's childhood friend 
who was inside, along with two other people, were killed inside that home. But there's also an amazing story of survival by chance. This is the home of Ray and Ethel Kale. Ordinarily, they would have been in their living room. That's where they were sitting before the tornado hit. But Ethel Kale was having stomach problems, asked her husband to take her to the emergency room. So he took her to the hospital, and while she was getting checked out, that's when the tornado gutted this house. Worried neighbors went to check on him. When they didn't see him, they called Mr. Kale on his cell phone, asked if he was okay. He said, yeah, just went to the hospital, but the wife's going to be fine. The neighbors say, well, you don't have a home to come home to. Well, the Kales are being philosophical because uh, they're, happy to be a, they're happy to be alive, and they believe if they had been inside this structure when the tornado hit, they wouldn't be around to tell the story. Sean. All right. Thanks, Jonathan. As we watch the frightening footage caught on tape by tornado eyewitnesses, video showing the twisters ripping roofs off homes and buildings, we're left to wonder what is causing this awful weather and have we seen the worst of it? Here now with her take is Fox News meteorologist Maria Molina is with us. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Too. Uh, this is, the, you watch 252, you know, and, ver, and in areas that are not normally known for, for torn, tornadoes. What happened? Well, they do do get tornadoes out in North Carolina and South Carolina, but the typically known area is Tornado Alley, so you're talking about areas in Texas, up through Oklahoma, Kansas. That's typically where we see, see, tend to see the greatest number of severe weather outbreaks during this time of the year, during the month of April. However, there were a lot of ingredients in place for this specific severe weather outbreak. We had a very strong jet stream. We had a lot of moist air ahead of our cold front, and that cold front was also very powerful. And behind it, very cold and dry air. So we're both of these Two air masses clash. We, we, we watch tornadoes. We watch this video, and it just raises the question, right? For most people, and I know there are people that that spend their lives chasing these tornadoes, but what causes this? How does this happen with such ferocity, such force? Well, that specific, well, a specific tornado, it's still debated a lot on how exactly a tornado will form, but you'll have your thunderstorms, you have a lot of warm, moist, unstable air, so that rises, and you also have a lot of wind shear, so what you have on, at the surface is winds out of the south, southeast, and aloft, that jet stream pushing winds out of the west or southwest, so that creates a twisting motion, so you'll start to see a lot of rotation within those thunderstorms, and actually funnel clouds start to come out, and once they hit the ground, that's where you're looking at images like the ones that we're seeing here with homes yeah. completely leveled. And actually, uh, we are starting to get some confirmations on some of those twisters that roll through North Carolina. Already at least two EF3 mm -hmm. tornadoes. We're talking about uh, in comparison to a hurricane, a Category 4, Category 5 hurricane. So considerable damage coming out of these twisters you know, with it, past 60 miles in length. We've made incredible uh, strides as it relates. We can predict tsunamis, for example, now. And, w for example, after the earthquake in Japan, and it was an immediate tsunami warning. We can track hurricanes as they're coming. We can, with, with pretty good prediction, we can tell where they're going to hit landfall or, or when and where, and within a pretty reasonable margin, we're successful. But we really don't have a lot of, of time to warn people about tornadoes. Yeah. Uh, is there something that maybe the conditions over time that people will be able to get warnings so we don't have to see this devastation again? Well, in this particular outbreak, we did have some advanced warning. There was a high risk issued out that morning, Saturday morning, to North Carolina, eastern parts of the state. And uh, there was also a PDS tornado watch. And actually, only less than 3% of tornado watches are called this. So it's a particularly dangerous situation. And what that means is that we could see these long lived, long tracked EF4. You have five tornadoes. So that was issued out that morning. And tornado warnings are, you know, pretty short in advance, but we knew that was coming. And unfortunately, this is what images are coming out from. East tornadoes. Thank you for being with us. Appreciate it. And wish we had more better, better news for people there. And coming up, he's the man behind some of the most controversial stories in politics today. And Andrew Breitbart has never been afraid of a fight. He will be right here in studio with his brand new book. And then later, speaking of controversial, we have all the details on the new Lady Gaga song that has some Catholics very angry. That much more. Bob Beckel on a great, great American panel. Straight ahead.